Now let's look at next four very similar magic methods. The string method takes one positional argument self and is invoked when an object is passed to the string constructor. Suppose I don't have string method in my class and I call string function with my custom object as argument. The string function returns the hexadecimal representation of my custom object. If magic method string is implemented, it overrides the default behavior of built in string function. Now, in main, when I call built in string function with my custom object as argument, Python returns whatever I have implemented in my string magic method. In Python 3, we have Unicode string, but Python 3 also supports so called bytes, which is ASCII string. So, whenever my class contains magic method bytes, and in main, I call built in function bytes with my custom object as parameter, Python calls the magic method bytes of my class. The REPR method is very similar to string method and both create simple string representation of an object. The difference between REPR and string method is that string method does not always attempt to return a string that is acceptable to eval function. In other words, the goal of string method is to return a printable string whereas REPR method always try to return a string which is a valid python expression. Similarly, I can overwrite format function for my custom object. The magic method length, if implemented, returns the length of a sequence or a collection, such as a string, list, dictionary, etc. For example, if the argument is a string, length returns the number of characters in that string or number of elements when the argument is a list or dictionary. In this example, I have implemented magic method length and it calls the built-in function length on instance variable name, which returns total number of characters in that string. The purpose of hash function is to uniquely identify objects. If two objects are equal, then the hash value should also be equal. In this example, my class contains hash method and I call build in function hash on instance variable name. You can also implement your own hash algorithm in your method, whereas in Python hash function depends on architecture of your machine. Mutable objects in Python don't have hash values. Now in main, I am calling hash function on my custom object and string sam, and both return same value. Now let's look at both enter and exit methods. Let's first see a very simple example of open function. In this example, I am opening myfile.txt with help of open function. The try finally block ensures that if any unexpected exception occurs, myfile.txt will be closed. Now I am opening same file with with statement. If you look at the code, I didn't close the file and there is no try finally block. Because with statement automatically closes myfile.txt. You can even check it by printing closed attribute of file object, which returns true. This is because the file object returned by open function has two methods, enter and exit. Enter is called at the start of with block and exit is called at the end. Python with statement only works with the objects that support the context management protocol. That is, they have enter and exit methods. The class which implement both methods is known as context manager. Let's define our own context manager class. My class test has two methods, enter and exit. In enter method, I open a file and return the file object, whereas in exit method, I close the file object. Now in main, I can open my file using with statement, without having worry about closing the file. I hope now you have basic understanding of both enter and exit magic methods. You can use enter and exit magic methods for different purposes. For example, restore initial value of a variable, release a lock while doing multi-threading, or close a socket, etc. Now let's move to next method index, which is rarely used in Python. Let's see a very simple example to understand the index method. Having an index method in a class, I can use the custom object as index value, as shown in this example, whereas index method must return a value which can be used as index value. Now let's look at next method directory. 
When you invoke directory method on your object, it provides a listing of all attributes including special methods. If your class contains magic method directory, you can override this default behavior of built-in function directory. In my example, my class contains directory method, in which I return name and health attributes. So by overriding directory method, I can hide the internal details of my objects, so that other user cannot see it. Now let's look at some magic attributes in Python. The name attribute gives a name of module as shown in this example. The class attribute can be used to determine the class of object. Similarly, dictionary attribute returns all the other attributes of that object. Python also provides slot attribute. Imagine you have a class and you want to instantiate thousands of objects of that class. As you can see in this example, I have only created two objects of class player. And when I print dictionary attribute, it shows me all the attributes of that object. Python also allows me to add new attributes to my objects. And again, when I print dictionary attribute, Python shows me newly added attributes. This flexibility is achieved through more memory usage and computing power. Because every time you create a new instance of class player, Python also creates a new dictionary instance for your custom instance. To avoid such overheads, you can define slot attributes in your class which saves memory but doesn't allow to add new attributes to your objects and your class doesn't have dictionary attribute anymore. Documentation string, short for doc string, is an important feature that Python offers. Any class, function, method or module can have a string literal as its very first statement. Python considers that string as doc string and save it as doc attribute of the respective object. You can assess the doc string by calling the doc string attribute. Now let's move to the next attribute annotation, which allows us to add metadata to the parameters of function or a method and their return value. Annotation have no special meaning to Python. The only thing that Python does in face of annotation is to put them in the annotation dictionary, and any other action is up to us. In this example, my class contains my test method which has three parameters, self, age, and health. The expression after every colon is an option annotation, and so the arrow return expression. Now in main when I call annotation attribute, it returns me method annotation dictionary. I hope now you have basic understanding of all magic methods and attributes we have covered in last four tutorials. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe my channel for future tutorials.